I have a very interesting book to show you. I went to an auction, I bought this book, and when I opened it up, this is what I found inside. No, actually I knew exactly what was gonna be inside. Uh, I don't think a lot of people realize what it was, but I knew it. It's a Merwin and Halbert, three and a half inch barrel, fourth model pocket revolver. Merwin and Halbert was a New York City designer and marketer of firearms back in 1874 to 1896. And they contracted out with Hopkins and Allen to make this firearm for them. One of the mistakes they made was marketing the gun as a manufactured by Hopkins and Allen. And that was a problem because in those days, Hopkins and Allen was noted for their inexpensive and poor quality firearms. The connection was obvious though, because uh, William and Mylan Holbert, who went in business with Merwin, were actually part owners of the Hopkins and Allen company. So it made sense that they would have that contracted out and manufacture the firearm. However, the Merwin Halbert was made to much more exacting standards, much higher quality manufacturing than the Hopkins and Allen. And it got a bad rap because it got associated with the inexpensive, poor quality Hopkins and Allen. If they hadn't done that, some experts believe that today, um, the Merwin and Halbert name would be as common as Colt, Remington, and Smith and Wesson. But unfortunately, that didn't take place. Let's take a closer look at it. Looks pretty much like a book to me, but in actuality, when you open it up, there is the Merwin Halbert revolver. Very unique piece of history here. Stag grips, engraving, factory engraving. They pioneered this kind of inexpensive engraving, and it was kind of popular back in the day. You can see it has, there's a stag engraved on there. And that goes along nicely with the stag grips. And then there's the rest of the factory type engraving. Taking a look at the other side, it's kind of got a different pattern on it. Looks pretty cool. It looks pretty fancy for the day. This would have been an upper end. You have your folding hammer. Those always get broken off when you find these. They sometimes are missing. This particular revolver is the fourth edition pocket model. They had three other versions of this and they improved them over time and they came to this final edition here. This one has some uh, unique features on it. It has the optional folding hammer spur which came in handy because in those days, uh, the pocket pistol was designed for um, urban carry and it would be unusual for someone to use a holster back at that time period. So they would just load the firearm and uh, carry it in their pocket. So having a folding hammer spur made it snag free. So if you were drawing it out of a pocket to protect yourself, you would not have to worry about the hammer getting snagged on your pocket and causing a problem. Also, they uh, pioneered a superior nickel plating process, which was superior to the competitors, and it helped to prevent rust and corrosion. And especially in the black powder era of the day, black powder cartridges are very corrosive, and having a nickel plating on there would give you a little more peace of mind that you weren't gonna rust out your firearm as easily. But it still needed a lot of care and oiling, just like any maintenance of any firearm would. They, they had a unique way of unloading empty cartridges. If you fired a few cartridges off and you still had loaded and empty cartridges mixed in the cylinder, you would put the hammer at half cock and there was a release button down here. You'd press that release button and the whole barrel will pivot 90 degrees and then forward. So you could then tip it up any empty cartridges would just fall out. Any live ones would be too long to fall out. They would stay in. Then you would simply close the firearm up, use the loading gate on the side, and you could top it off. If you're gonna carry it, definitely carry it on an empty chamber because like the Colt Peacemaker of the day, um, if you carried a live round under a downed hammer and the hammer was struck, you could accidentally discharge that round. So the recommended carry is four rounds in this little five cylinder, empty chamber under the hammer, and you would lower the hammer down safely on an empty chamber and you would carry it like so. Then if you needed it in emergency, you can draw it out of your holster and you could cock it and fire it single action if you needed to, 
or you could just grab it and pull the trigger and you could fire it double action if you needed to. Very pi pioneering ideas, but unfortunately, it just didn't catch on. Another unique uh, feature of this firearm is the ability to change barrels very easily. So later on, they would offer these models with a long and a shorter barrel, like a small two and a half inch carry barrel and a longer five and a half inch target barrel. So the way you change the barrels, uh, just the same as load unloading it, put the hammer at half cock and you press the uh, unloading lever and that gets you to that point. And then there's an additional button up top here and for cleaning or disassembly you would press that button and the whole barrel assembly comes apart like so and you could clean it or just put a new version of this on so if you had a spare longer barrel you could just reassemble this the same way it came apart and it just goes back on like so and then close it back up Load it if you need to. Hammer down on empty chamber, hammer spur down, and now it's ready to carry. So I've had this thing for a couple months now and I've been wanting the weather to clear up so I can get out to shoot it. I've loaded some very light black powder loads. Black powder would have probably been the more common load used in a firearm like this. I've had the gun inspected, it's all in good shape. I just don't wanna take the chance of putting any extra wear and tear on it using smokeless powder loads. Black powder loads are a lot less pressure and uh, especially light ones and it'll be a lot less wear and tear on the firearm. So let's go to the range, let's shoot it and then we'll talk a little more about it. So the weather finally cooperated and I'm able to get out to the range to shoot the Merwin and Hulbert. I'm really excited, it's gonna be my first shots through it. So we're gonna load it up. I'm gonna start with black powder cartridges. I brought along some period cartridges of the day, but I'm not gonna shoot those because I don't know if they'll even go off. They're so very old. So let's load them up and let's give it a few shots. One thing I noticed, just an observation in loading this, because of this recoil shield here at the rear of the cylinder, it appears that it's very difficult to see where the rounds are. So if you were going to load four and leave an empty chamber, it'd be very difficult without looking in front of the gun to see where the rounds were and to make sure you did in fact have an empty cylinder on that hammer. So I don't know how they did it back in the day. I'm thinking they probably didn't realize and just loaded five and put it at half cock and threw it in their pocket, which is really something I would not recommend doing. But uh, who knows? One of those things lost to history, I guess. Let's take a few shots and see how it works. I'm gonna start single action. I'm gonna shoot the target on the right. And double action. Not bad, it, it doesn't really have much recoil to it. Uh, they are light loads, but they, it pretty much shoots a little high, but pretty much to the point of aim at this distance. Um, I'm gonna try the unload part now. So I did fire two rounds, there's five in there originally. Let's see how it would work just to remove the empties and leave the live rounds in there. So we're gonna put it at half cock. We're gonna press this little lever, turn it sideways, open it up, And the empty rounds fell out. And as, as you can see there, the live rounds are still in there. So they're a little too long to fall out. So this would remove just the empties. And then we can close this back up and add a few rounds to complete the loaded cylinder. So that part worked pretty good. Let's um, take a few shots at some other objects. I'm gonna shoot a uh, water jug and then we'll try some ballistic gel. So let's try the water jug first. I don't expect much. We're talking round nose projectiles here. It's not gonna do much expanding. It's just gonna probably punch right through that water jug. But just for the sake of uh, playing around, I just wanted to see how it would affect it. I know how modern ammunition works and it's quite effective, but I don't think this is gonna do too well. Let's take a shot 
at the water jug. And just put a big hole in it. Try another one. So it's able to hit the target, but just not much effect on the target. Even at close range, we're talking a big round nose piece of lead. It would be effective for what it needed to do, but not, not much expansion, not much shocking power, not much uh, immediate stop. So now we're gonna try ballistic gel. As you saw, the uh, water jug really didn't do much when you shot it. It's a big lead ball traveling at a very slow speed and it just basically punched right through it. All right, ballistic gel. Here we go. Point blank, ballistic gel. Let's go take a look at it. You can see it really didn't go very far. It, it's basically right about there. It did tumble a little bit and it did create a wound cavity. So I suppose that would have been effective, but it didn't really go very deep. But um, given the fact it's a light load and just a lead bullet, I'm not surprised. Let's take a closer look at it. Let me dig that out. There's the projectile that I dug out of the ballistic gel. It didn't really damage it at all. It basically is fully intact with the little rifling marks on it. That's about it. So there you have it, the Merwin Hulbert, an interesting little revolver from history's past. If you can find one, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun to shoot, and it's a cool little revolver for your collection. So right now I need to clean this though because black powder cartridges can be very corrosive if left unattended for too long a period of time. So I wanna get this cleaned up as soon as possible. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.